Let's talk about a new application in multivariable dynamical systems. Uh, we'll be talking about rental car tracking, but this has applications to a bunch of other things. Uh, for example, um, people with kidney infections might be, need to be in the hospital for a few days and then go home. Hopefully they'll be there for a month or two and then might need to go back to the hospital for a few days, which is kind of like rental cars staying on the lot and then going off the lot being rented. Uh, you can look at this as like the chemical concentration inside and outside of a biological cell or moving across any membrane. You can look at it as animals moving from one region to another. Uh, lots of different ways to look at this, but business is important too, so let's think about tracking rental cars. Let's say we're managing just one facility and they have 100 rental cars, and each one is either here on the parking lot ready to be rented or it's rented and running around town. Um, we're going to do time steps day by day. We'll say H is the number of cars here uh, at the start of the day, and R is the number of cars that are currently rented, not available to be newly rented. And let's say our long-term statistics show us that 60% of the cars that are here today will still be here tomorrow. And 30% of the cars that are rented today will be back here at, the, at the, our parking lot tomorrow. So how are we going to set up a system to predict how many cars will be here day by day? So unlike most of what we've been doing so far, where we were finding an equation for delta for the change, in this system it's actually easier to compute it, um, just the new value directly from the old value. So we said that um, tomorrow's cars, uh, so 60% of today's cars that are here will still be here tomorrow. So however many are here today, 60% of those will be among those here tomorrow. And we said that 30% of the cars that are out today, that are rented, will be back here tomorrow. So there's that 30% of the cars that are currently rented will be here on the parking lot tomorrow. So take a second, think about what numbers need to go here for the number of cars that are out rented tomorrow. Pause the video and think about that. Three, two, one, pause. Okay, welcome back from pausing. Um, so the number that needs to go here, well, if 60% of the cars that are here stay here, the other 40% must be going out tomorrow. Um, and the uh, if 30% of the cars that are out right now come back, then the ones that stay out must be the other 70%. So we need this number and that number to add to 100%, this number and that number to add to 100%. Um, you might have noticed we're doing this times that plus this times that, which is a sum product. We all love sum products. Uh, but we can even see it as a matrix multiply. The, the matrix 6, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, or vice versa, um, is a matrix of coefficients. And then we're multiplying it by a vector of the number of cars here and the number of cars that are rented. Um, and you're used to doing uh, matrix times a column vector, but here it's actually easier to think of it as a row vector and do a row vector times a matrix. And then we end up with the 0.6, and then this ends up being 0.4, and 0.3, and 0.7. So it's transposed of that because we're thinking of it transposed from the way we usually think about it. So let's go set that up in Excel. Um, so we said 0.6, and we can do 1 minus that, and then 0.3, and 1 minus that. And we said we'd start with 100 here and 0 rented. And then we need to say, let's multiply this vector by this matrix. And there is a way to do matrix multiply in Excel, but it takes a little bit of extra skill. But a good way to think about that is it's a new skill. So let's go back and look at that new skill, we're going to use mmult, and you give it the first thing in the matrix multiply, or vector, and the second thing. Um, but mmult needs to give you back two things. If we're doing a uh, 1 by 2 vector times a 2 by 2 matrix, we need, should get back a 1 by 2 vector. In Excel, you usually just get back one thing, and it goes in one cell. So here on the next slide, we have important directions about using mmult. So uh, because we need to get back more than one thing, what we're going to be using is called an array formula. We start by highlighting where we want all the results to go, and then we type mmult, but we don't just press enter. We need to enter this as an array formula, 
And to do that, you hold down Control and Shift, and then press Enter. You don't have to press them all simultaneously exactly at the same time. You can hold down Control and Shift, and then a second or whatever later, you can also press Enter. Um, and if you make a mistake, you have to basically start all over again. You can't just change it. So let's go do that. So I want my answer to go in these cells. So I highlight both of them. And then I hit equals. And I type mmult. And I'm going to do this vector, comma, this array. And I want to keep referring to that array even when I fill down. So I'm going to put dollar signs there. Close the parentheses. But I don't hit enter yet. I hold down control and shift and then press enter. So let me show the formula here. It looks ordinary, but if I look up at the formula bar, I can see curly braces around the whole formula, and that's how you know that it's an array formula. If I try to just delete this part of it, it complains and says you can't change part of an array. Or if I try to change just that part, you can't change part of an array. If I highlight the whole thing and hit delete, then it works. Uh, I'm going to hit undo though. So that's how to do mmult there, and once you have that filled in, you can just double click to fill down as usual, and then each of these will be its own array formula. Alright, so what's left to do on this problem? What do you think? Hopefully you said graph it. So let's graph it. Uh, I've got 30 days planned out here. Um, let's use that. Um, and we'll switch to a layout with titles and give things good titles. Um, and this is number of cars. Um, let's try that one again. Alright, so what do you observe about this graph? We'll come back to that in the next video.